Well, the daffodils are in bloom in Vermont, which means it's time to be in the vegetable garden. Hi, I'm Leonard Perry with University of Vermont Extension. If you're thinking about growing your own vegetables this year, once you decide what to plant, you need to decide when and where to plant. We'll have answers for these today on Across the Fence, as well as many more tips for spring in the vegetable garden. Today we're in Richmond at the garden of Kathy La Liberté. Thanks so much, Kathy, for having us back to your gorgeous garden. And a gorgeous day it is. It really is. And I have to think back to the last time we talked, back in March, seems so long ago, and yeah. you were still eating out of the garden from last year. I assume you're all done with I that wish, now? I wish I was done. I still have a freezer full of berries, which I'm eating in smoothies, which is a terrible thing. <laughs> but, and I have um, tomato sauce and some other salsas and stuff that I'm eating up. And those will probably be gone, hopefully, in about a month or so, by the time I'm really eating a lot of food from fresh from the garden. But I didn't hear anything about root crops. I assume those, those are gone. Those are gone. Yeah, I've eaten them up. Well, unfortunately, you remember I showed you some garlic that we yes. had grown a lot Very of. Impressive. Well, unfortunately, that got too cold. It got below freezing where it was, where we ah. had it stored. And like a lot of the root crops, they like to be cool, but yeah, not but below freezing, yeah. so they rotted. Uh. But the good news is, of garlic that we started back in October, is coming along gorgeous. I brought a picture of it to show how beautiful it is with straw in the bed. That will harvest in July, so I guess we'll have to get by till then. And then we have pepper started, we'll put in after that. So uh -huh. we've got a little succession thing going on, which I know you do as well. Yeah. So tell us about what you have in the garden. Well, it's May. Um, I've been planting since March, uh, first indoors, then in the greenhouse, now in the garden. Um, and at this time of year, I'm thinking about a couple things. One is um, where crops were last year, so I don't put the same thing in the same row. And the other is uh, where crops are, which crops are going to be in the same place all season, and which ones are going to be rotated out and something else put in later in the season. So right now, what's in is peas and um, early like lettuce, Swiss chard, bro broccoli, cauliflower, uh, that kind of stuff. And when those are done, probably um, the end of June or so, those crops will come out, and I'll put in some fall stuff: beets, carrots. Um, stuff like that, kale, things that you like to eat in the fall. Um, but <clears throat> really planting is my favorite thing to do in the garden. So I try to be planting every single week, all summer long. So I keep a packet, of, a little bunch of seed packets, and every week I keep it handy and I try to put new stuff in. And so that keeps me in the garden looking for places to put stuff. And the good thing about that is that I'm looking for crops that are past their prime, and those are getting pulled out, which is good to keep the um, disease and pest stuff down. And it also just keeps me engaged and active in the garden. Um, well, I noticed some empty spots. I assume the warmer crops, like the tomatoes and potatoes, it warms up a little bit, you know, later, Memorial Day or yeah, whatever yeah. around then. Those are in the greenhouse right now. Those will come out um, the end of, of May, and I'll be covering them up with a row cover for a couple weeks just to keep them extra warm. So most of the things we're seeing here, it looks like you started probably from transplants mm -hmm. in the greenhouse, mm -hmm. but the peas, I assume, you sow those. Uh, right. Actually, I put those in as transplants this year. Oh, so to, you even did that? Just to try it. Yeah. yeah to, uh, it's fun to always try different yeah. things in the garden. Yeah. But I'll one thing, you know. it looks like the perennial asparagus, that probably stays there, so. Yeah, that actually that bed's been there for more than 25 years. Wow. Um, and I've been eating a lot of it uh, starting last week, and I'll be eating it for another four to six weeks. Um, it's one thing I don't preserve. Um, it doesn't really freeze that well, and it's so much fun giving it away to people. They're so appreciative. I use a um, serrated knife, and I cut just about a quarter inch, half inch below the soil surface at an angle. Um, I'm picking as me I want to try to pick everything that's six inches or eight inches tall and not leave um, other ones around because I found that the asparagus beetles, they lay their eggs on uh, maturing uh, asparagus heads. And so if there's no asparagus there, they don't have any place to lay their eggs. And so if you keep it cut, keep it harvested, you don't really have a problem with asparagus beetles. And then you mentioned after, say, around six weeks when the stalks are very thin, you just let those go. I to, let those go. And so they, you have some plant to survive. Yeah, right, right, right. You have to stop at some point. Plus you've had enough asparagus up to And here. you mentioned about the beetles. And notice you have these white uh, covers here. I assume, I, I know I use them to help keep a lot of the insects off. I assume you do the and same. And rabbit. Yeah, yeah, and rabbits too. So right. yeah, it's more than one reason to yeah, use those. Right. But one of the things about, you talked about harvesting asparagus, I have some 
how I grow lettuce here um, so the bunny doesn't get it. I put it in a window box, put it up on the deck on a rail, plus it's easier to harvest. And a couple things, I start another one about this stage after a few weeks, so I have another succession coming. Mm. Now these are just small still, they'll get larger. It's a red romaine, it looks really attractive. I hate to harvest a lot of times. This is a bit thick, as you can see. Normally I put one row in here, but I really wanted a lot of lettuce early on, so I did two. But I'll have to thin that out, so I'll just come right in here and pull every uh, few out, and then I'll just use them right in salad here. So it's a good way to thin. You don't have, with a lot of these vegetables, I think a lot of people don't realize, you don't have to wait till the end uh, when they're fully mature. You can use them as you mm -hmm, thin them out. Mm -hmm. So that's a good tip there. Now, one of the things I thought we should talk about, I know it's been very popular, are these grow bags. I know you use these too. I do. I grow regular potatoes and sweet potatoes in them. Great. Well, this is the one that has the potato sprouted. I planted it about a month ago. Mm -hmm. I put it in a uh, place that doesn't uh, freeze. I've got a small greenhouse. You could use an unheated garage. Those are about a month old. As they grow, you notice it's about a third full. Uh, then I'll keep adding soil. So it's great. You can use different soil in there because they like it a little bit more acidic. Mm. You can use different varieties. You can move them about. Um, and then here we have some one ready to plant. I use a mix of about um, it's a, about half and half potting soil and compost. Now what do you use? I use about a third compost and two thirds Promix. Okay, and yeah. I like the Promix for, for bigger bags because it's a lot lighter yeah, than this right. when this gets full. It's, it, I don't want to be moving these, but here's an example of one of these. You want to get uh, either a piece of potato or a full potato with two or three of these eyes or buds and just put it down. I put five in here and push it just below the surface and then um, again as they grow and sprout just add more. Now one of the things they've come out with, which I just wanted to show, I'm going to try these as you haven't, are different sizes and shapes. Now I've got uh, these are for carrots, they're deeper. So I've got orange for carrots, of course. Purple for the peppers. This is not as deep and wider, so I'm going to try that. And then this real deep one here, bright blue, I'm going to use for a tomato. Uh, I thought the red tomato would get some blue. Very Very nice. nice attraction. So you can have color, you can have for a small space garden, you can, or a patio, you can actually have a garden in these two. Yeah, and I have a plenty big garden, but I still use them because they work really well. Likewise. Now notice you have your greenhouse full of plants. So We've, uh, let's go take a look and see right. what you have there. Well, Kathy, you've got a lovely little greenhouse here. Why would someone want to think about a home greenhouse? Well, most people think about a greenhouse for growing seedlings, which um, is a really good reason to have a greenhouse, and I do grow lots of seedlings. But uh, there are lots of other uses for a greenhouse. I use my uh, greenhouse in the spring for growing early greens, in the summer for growing tomatoes, which love the heat. You know, I, I keep it pretty much busy all year round. I oh, know, you just talk vegetables. I'm mainly into the flowers. I use it to overwinter. Uh, plants that won't quite make it outside, I can put in a greenhouse. Yep, that's another use. And inside of there, you'll see a lot more than vegetables. There are a lot of flowers in there. And the other thing is, greenhouses are pretty uh, affordable now. I mean, they're not prohibitive, and you can find them a lot of places. That's true. They're a lot more available now. Um, I don't actually heat my greenhouse. Um, kind of uh, thrifty in that way. And so I really, even without heat. It's amazing, even inside. here in the north, it, you get enough heat in there. Yep. yep. Let's go uh, feel some All heat. Right. <laughs> wow, Kathy, there are a lot of plants in here. <laughs> it gets pretty full by, by May. Um, I've, been, I've had the greenhouse going since probably the beginning of April um, and started a lot of stuff. Some things have already gone out. Now the tomatoes are really eager to go outside. So you really start a lot of these things just in April. I mean, uh, late March, early April. Yeah, most of the stuff, like tomatoes and things like that, I start indoors under lights um, and then bring them out into the greenhouse. I don't put extra heat into the greenhouse. Um, I just wait until it's really warm enough that the stuff isn't going to get killed by the cold and bring, them, bring it out from the house. Oh, so that's pretty, uh, you don't have to pay for a lot of heat then. It's I very environmental that way. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> just gets enough heat and even at night it, it stays warm enough. Yeah, it does hold the heat pretty well. That's great. So you start these. Um, I guess the first thing is you got so many different things. How do you know what to start when well, you're starting? Well, obviously I don't. I'm not discerning enough because I have way too many kinds of things. I probably have 12 different kinds of tomato plants, um, and one packet of seeds, of course, will start 25 plants or so. I try to control myself, but the good thing is you can always find somebody who wants a tomato plant. So. Um, I have over the years, I always try a couple new things each year and then I have some old favorites that I go back to that have just performed really well for me. 
I have some heirlooms, I have some hybrids. The hybrids are really just, you can count on them like Big Beef is a good one. And uh, beginning gardeners probably want to start with some of those hybrids that you can uh, uh, depend on for disease con control and um, productivity. And then get into some of the heirlooms. I have um, orange blossom, um, some more unusual varieties that are a little bit more unique. And more and more you can find heirlooms and some of the different ones in seed packets, or you can just find them online in seed catalogs. There too. are probably a hundred tomatoes I'd love to grow. Just, it's fun to see them. So you start these, uh, do you start everything inside under lights pretty much? I do pretty much, although you can see here I've got um, some broccoli and kale. Um, and fennel, uh, second crop of fennel started out here. So once it warms up, I'm getting the second crops going so that when I take out the early lettuces and, and things like that, I have um, some of the midsummer and fall crops ready to go in. And as far as sowing, you just use a regular seed starting mix? I do, um, and all kinds of different pots over the years. I've accumulated a lot of things. I happen to like these um, fiber pots. They go right in the compost bin after a couple of years of use. Um, they cost like 20 cents each or so, and uh, I probably get four years out of them. Um, and I'll, in this case, I've I've dropped seeds one by one in here. But for some of the smaller seeds, um, you can just broadcast them or sprinkle them on, and then pull some out or separate them into um, larger containers. I did that with basil. Here's a six pack of basil. So I sowed the seeds and broadcast them into one of these pots when they got a second set of leaves. I pulled them out and put them into individual things like this and I'll grow them on um, for another couple weeks until they get um, big enough and it's warm enough that they can be outside. I know that's the type I usually use is just the individual six packs yep. but I know a variation on that kind of a combination is egg cartons I know some people use. Yeah I haven't tried that. Um, I, I ought to give that a try. So then you grow these on here, do you give them you know, obviously water, any, any fertilizer uh, as they start uh, They growing? get a dilute fertilizer um, once they have, um, like these are too young to get fertilizer. Once they've got a couple of sets of leaves on them, um, I start fertilizing them maybe once a week. But it really is important to keep every single day you need to be in the greenhouse. It is a commitment um, because a sunny day, it, you know, they're going to need water at least once, if not twice a day. Well, these have been started, these are going outside, but it looks like some have just gone in on this side over here. Yes, um, I do have, uh, I use this greenhouse all year round actually, and I have a bed in the ground here that I um, plant right into. So in the fall, what I did was I seeded um, spinach and lettuces, uh, probably September or so. They got of a good size, maybe this tall or so, and I covered them up with fabric and left them there for the winter. I took the fabric off in March, uh, began watering them, and I've been eating salads in here. Um, you can see over here that some of it's kind of starting to go to seed, but um, it kept me in plenty of lettuce and spinach. Um, starting uh, back in late winter. Yep, so they really go to sleep for the winter, and then as soon as the, the days get longer, the light comes on, they start growing. Inside of a greenhouse, you get a lot warmer temperatures, obviously, and tomatoes love heat. They're a tropical plant. Um, the fr they grow better, they're protected from the elements, the fruit gets sweeter, and um, so that's what I do. So these will be in here until towards September when I rip them out and put in the greens again. The biggest problem is they just grow so vigorously that by the time it gets to be late summer, you, you sort of have to fight your way into the greenhouse. Wow. Well, Kathy, this is how I start my tomatoes in these little cell packs here. As you can see, they're kind of tall, kind of crowded. So how I go in and thin so I don't disturb the roots is, is use some scissors or sharp pruners like this and just cut them right off and take those pieces out. So you have one per cell. I will be transplanting these into larger pots shortly and giving them fertilizer. They're a little bit yellowish. They'll need that. Uh-huh. Well, Leonard, um... How fast, how long will it take them to catch up to these? Well, it's going to take a little bit longer, <laughs> but I think I'm a little colder, so I won't plant them out as soon as you do. But mine will catch up to All yours. Right. That's a nice thing about tomatoes. That's true. They do catch up. That's true. So thanks so much for having us here today welcome. and sharing your garden. I look forward to coming back in July and seeing what you have then and what you're harvesting. Yeah. All right. See you and then. For more information, you can visit my website, perrysperennials.info. Thanks for watching today on Across the Fence. For UVM Extension, I'm Leonard Perry.